I was going to do a vlog on Paddington, but I died from a preventable accident. But I got better. But seriously, let's talk about Paddington. I actually saw this a couple of weeks ago, but didn't get a chance to do a vlog until now, just because real life kept getting in the way, as it is often wont to do. But now I finally have the time. And I was dreading this movie for quite some time. First, that god-awful teaser trailer came out with that bathtub scene, which just looked horrible and did not seem anything like the character that I remember from my childhood at all. And then we hear about all the troubles with the production behind the scenes and Colin Firth dropping out of the movie because he was originally supposed to voice Paddington. And then they had to redo a lot of the animation after they recast a new actor because they originally did it to Firth's recording and now they had to redo it to the new guy. And then they launched it in the dumping ground of January, at least here in the States. All of this added up to what was sure to be a miserable film. Turns out it's actually pretty good. I totally did not expect this, but this was really well done. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, the movie starts out in darkest Peru, because that's how it always is in Paddington. It's not just Peru, it's darkest Peru. Even though it wasn't really all that dark, actually. It was actually rather bright and sunny during the day, but never mind. Anyway, Paddington lives here with his aunt and uncle until an earthquake destroys their home and seemingly takes his uncle along with it. And his aunt goes to live at the home for retired bears in Lima, because they have that, apparently. And Paddington is sent off to London to find himself a new home. And when he gets there, he meets the Brown family and befriends them, and they offer to take him in. Mr. Brown is somewhat reluctant to do this, but he eventually warms up to him, of course. And then his adventures and also misadventures in London begin. Now, this is a character that I remember from my childhood. Um, I don't know how many of the books I actually read. Probably not many of them. But I do remember the old uh, stop-motion series that was originally made in England but was imported by PBS in the United States. And this movie is actually quite faithful to the character. Uh, ben Wishaw is the actor that eventually ended up doing the voice for Paddington and does a very good job. Actually, he probably was a better choice than Colin Firth, quite frankly, because he has a much younger and more innocent sounding voice than Colin would have given the character. So, you know what? I think it worked out. The way they portray this character is very well done, very innocent and extremely polite. However, when someone upsets him, he is not afraid to hit them with a hard stare. I can see into your soul. And of course he has an unnatural obsession with marmalade because all bears love marmalade, didn't you know? There's one scene in particular where he stows away on a ship to get from darkest Peru to London and he brings along a suitcase which has nothing but jars of marmalade in it and by the time he's done, the entire bottom of this lifeboat that he's hiding in is just covered with the jars. Far more than he should have been able to fit in that suitcase, quite frankly. I'm not sure if the suitcase is perhaps a TARDIS or something. Um, I don't know. Doctor Who is in the movie, so yeah, Peter Capaldi, he's in here. So maybe that's a, there's some kind of weird tie-in going on here. I don't know. But anyway, the cast was all very good, I thought. Really, the only weak links were the, uh, the two brown children. Um, what were their names? Madeline Harris and Samuel Jocelyn. Uh, they weren't bad by any means, but just compared to the rest of the cast, not quite as good. But you know, really nothing to complain about as far as the acting goes. Um, Hugh Bonneville and Sally Hawkins play the Brown parents. I thought they were fantastic. Uh, as I mentioned, Peter Capaldi is in here. He plays the Brown's neighbor, Mr. Curry, who sadly didn't get to do quite as much in this movie as I was hoping for. He does factor into the plot, but I seem to remember from the old stop motion series that uh, many of those episodes would have Paddington somehow destroying some of Mr. Curry's property. Never on purpose, of course, just through some sort of, you know, he's trying to do something to help him out, has the best of intentions, but inevitably ends up breaking something. Like you do. 
that kind of thing. And there really wasn't any of that in the movie. I was a little bit disappointed by that. The villain of the movie is this uh, woman named Millicent, who was played by Nicole Kidman, and she is a total cartoon villain and is clearly having entirely too much fun. And yeah, I really liked her character. She plays this uh, taxidermist who works for a museum and wants to... Uh, acquire Paddington and turn him into a stuffed exhibit, which naturally Paddington is not too happy about. And she spends the majority of the movie trying to capture the bear, often with hilarious results. And the humor in this movie does work pretty well overall. There are a, maybe one or two missteps. That bathroom scene is still in the movie, and it's still kind of stupid, but overall, it, it was actually very well done. And the CGI Paddington looks fantastic. The special effects crew did a very good job with him. And really, there's not much more I have to say about it. This was, you know, not a whole lot to complain about in this movie, so that doesn't leave me with much to talk about. All I really have left to say is, if you haven't seen it yet, it's definitely worth the ticket price. Take the kids, they're gonna love it. And yeah, that's Paddington. So till next time, take care.